What's good, family, man? It's your boy, man. It's Quizzy, man. I'm back today with another video. And guess what, man? We're doing something interesting, right? Because we are doing a Watch Mojo video. Normally, I don't like doing Watch Mojo videos because I just like watching them. They're really interesting. They got a lot of time into it. But this is very, really, this is really interesting to me. It's top 10 surprisingly touching moments from South Park. And I'm like, bro, I'm getting ready to check it out for myself. So I'm like, man, we got to check this out together of course you know i got my son in the background man he's chilling man if you like south park and want more south park you can actually go down to the link below it's the patreon link only three dollars a month and basically all i'm doing is south park episodes and rick and morty and we're adding on more things to the list all right like i said it's only three dollars but we're starting from episode one all right so man if you appreciate your boy want to support your boy then go down below man and support me like that man i I, even if you don't, I still appreciate everything you do. Let's get started. Big Brother Ike have shared one of the show's most heartfelt dynamics. Ready, Ike? Kick the baby. Who kick the baby? In season seven. Bro, I remember we just, I just watched this episode on the Patreon. This shit is crazy, bro. It's just for the simple fact, Cartman is literally laying down because he slapped him with Ike. Bro, that shit is crazy. Kyle risks losing Ike forever when his birth parents take him back to Canada. By Canadian law, I must award custody of the child to his birth parents. Damn. Yes! Yes! In one of his most personal speeches to date, Kyle tries appealing to the Canadian Prime Minister with a meaningful expression about what it truly means to be a family. Family isn't about whose blood you have in you. Family is about the people who cared about you and took care of you. We're not the same blood, but I love my little brother. As moved as we are. Man, oh, that's facts, bro. I'm adopted, bro. For anybody that didn't know, I'm adopted. So I, I wholeheartedly believe that. You know what I'm saying? It's not about the blood that I have in here and the blood that somebody else shares that we share the same blood type or same blood DNA. That is just DNA. I didn't mean to say blood type. Y'all, I know y'all are getting ready to say something dumb. Quizzy, it's not blood type. It's actually just your DNA. It's your chromosomes and stuff. Anyways. It's not about just the DNA that you share. It's just about the experiences that you share with people. It's just about it's about the times that you share, the um, the love that they give you and you give them. But that's what it's really about. That's family, bro. People that's willing to go above and beyond for you. Bro. The prime minister doesn't feel the same way and promptly blows Kenny up in a show of rage. But why are you making such strange laws? I said no. Fortunately, the Damn. prime minister behind the curtain is revealed to be Saddam Hussein, and he's arrested <laughs> on the spot. Kyle's words get through to Ike's birth parents, who realize there's more to family than just blood. He doesn't belong here. He belongs with his family. Peter, would you like to go back to your home in Colorado? Number nine, uh... the calves. Matt Stone and Trey Parker aren't exactly what you'd call vegetarians, but they do have a thing about eating baby cows. Wait a minute. Veal is little baby cows? Yep, -er. Then why the hell do they call it veal? While this episode isn't anti-meat, it does stand up for the poor calves, hell suggesting yeah. that nobody would eat veal if the product were called Little Tortured Baby Cow. Damn! I managed to get the FDA to officially change the word veal to Tortured Baby Cow. Damn! The creators further get their point across by making the calves as adorable as possible. Right. them sad faces and puppy dog eyes. Bro, anything with gigantic big eyes like that is 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 just like come on bro that's cute man it's it's like how could how could you how could you eat that you know what i'm saying how could you even see that die like no bro no 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 guys the boys decide to lock all the animals and themselves in their bedroom and go on a hunger strike Though eventually thwarted by the FBI, their rescue effort is ultimately successful, as the new brand name drives down national demand for veal. In the 24 hours since the word veal was officially changed to Little Tortured Baby Cow, the market has gone dry. Seems when people see Little Tortured Baby Cow on their menus, they don't feel, feel like ordering. Number eight. Only a psychopath could want to have that after they see that on a menu. It's like, imagine you going to a, 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 a restaurant, a nice restaurant. You sitting down, you pop open your menu and everything. You look on there, oh, okay, what's your specials? Oh, well, actually, the specials is, um, we actually have a nice rosetta and then a little torture baby cow. I'll take the rosetta. The fuck is a rosetta? Eight. Cartman gives Kyle CPR. Following a hazardous encounter with Man Bear Pig, Kyle is left pale-faced and lifeless on the ground. When everyone else in the room is ready to declare him dead, Cartman, of all people, refuses to give up on him. Ah. 
The situation moves from emotional to surprisingly intense as Cartman tearfully tries resuscitating Kyle. <laughs> Damn, that is God, you never walked away from anything in your life, now fight! Honestly, a scene like this feels more like something you'd see on Lost or ER than South Park. Come on! Come on! Come on! As Kyle sputters and coughs back to life, Cartman is seen cradling his head as he provides him with an oxygen mask. Granted, Cartman is mainly concerned about his bet with Kyle, but nevertheless, <laughs> we like to think that a part of Cartman can't handle the idea of life without Kyle. That's facts, though. As much I said this before, as much as Cartman gives Kyle all this crap, bro, Kyle really, I mean, yeah, no, Kyle really loves Cartman. Cartman really loves Kyle. They really love each other, bro. It, that, that, at the end of it, that's the essence of it, bro. You, you know, you can't not, you can't deny that, bro. Well. At least now he doesn't have to suck anyone's balls. Carmen, like, hell no. No, he had a strong heart. He wanted to live. Number seven, <laughs> Chef's Funeral. When South Park made fun of Scientology in season nine, Chef's voice actor, Isaac Hayes, felt that he could no longer contribute to a show that mocked his religion. Hayes' sudden exit left Stone and Parker feeling sad, but slightly resentful, and they certainly show it in season 10's opening episode. That's fucked I'm gonna miss up. Chef. I'm gonna miss Chef and I. I don't know how to tell him. Chef is oft in the most gruesome, mean-spirited way imaginable. Thanks. However, the episode doesn't disregard all the good work Hayes did over the years. We're all here today because Chef has been such an important part of our lives. Chef's funeral is a genuine tearjerker, reuniting many of the people he touched, from Mrs. Garrison to Elton John. Right. And Kyle even delivers a bittersweet eulogy about all the laughs, songs, and wisdom Chef gave us, adding that we shouldn't blame him but rather a certain, quote, fruity little club. So you see, <laughs> we shouldn't be mad at Chef for leaving us. <laughs> we should be mad at that fruity little club for scrambling his brains. That's messed up, and in the end, they're still making fun of Scientology. I'm, I'm not a part of that community, but I'm just saying, that's messed up when you, like, he left the show just for that, and then they, but they stuck to their roots. They still made fun of it, bro. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, they are South Park, bro. You can't really get too mad at them because this is what they do and they've been doing it and they do it flawless. Kenny gives his sister a toy. When Kenny's little sister Karen popped up as a background character in season nine, we didn't expect much to come from her. In more recent years, however, Karen has played a role in some of the show's most tender moments, adding new layers to Kenny's character in the process. You are going to be okay, Karen. You have to keep believing that. Why did my mommy and daddy go to jail? Sometimes people do stupid things. Sometimes they don't realize what should have come first until it's too late. In season 19, Thanks. Kenny has to work his fingertips to the bone merely to receive a child labor wage. But he uses his measly paycheck to purchase the lonely Karen a doll. That's what's up, though. Wow. Karen lights up at the sight of her new plaything. And although Kenny isn't the easiest character to read, we can tell that his sister's happiness is all the reward he needed. Thanks. It's a simple moment that speaks volumes about who Kenny truly is underneath the hood. Yeah, no, Kenny is that dude. T Kenny is the GOAT. Kenny is the GOAT, bruh. We, we already explored that yesterday. Kenny is the GOAT. And if you're watching this in the future, then it obviously wasn't yesterday. Just chill. But Kenny is definitely the GOAT. Mm. Number five. Kip Drordy. There's really people out there without a Facebook friend in the world? That's so wrong. Poor Kip Drordy spends his days periodically checking his Facebook page, hoping someone will be his friend. Oh, out of pity, Kyle adds Kip as a friend, hoping to make him feel a little better. Through the unfortunate reality of social hierarchy, Kyle starts losing Facebook friends for his act of goodwill. Looking around Facebook today, we see that since adding loser Kip Drardy as a friend, <laughs> Kyle Broflowski's stock is limited. He jumps ship to save his own reputation, which leaves Kip more depressed than ever. The episode Damn. goes to a joyous resolution, however, when Kip receives all 845,323 friends from Stan's deleted sentient profile whom he defeated from inside the Facebook matrix in a Tron-like battle for survival. That's dope, though. <laughs> Number hey, that, hey, that low-key, that does touch me, though. Because at the end of the day, bro, What's crazy is as much as people say, I don't care what people think, I don't care about this, I don't care about that, majority of you might not care. You still might live your life and do what you do, but 
part of us cares because we're human. We have interactions with people. We want social recognition. We want to be recognized for the good things in life. And if, if somebody gets to the point where they completely don't care, it's because they've been longing for that for so long and they never got it. So they just said like, all right, look, I don't, I don't need to do that, but I care about myself, which is good. It's good to care about how you feel. And, but it just doesn't change the social hierarchy that excuse me, humans have already said. And it makes it even worse with this Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of this, because it's like, well now it's like, I'm gonna judge you off of how many people follow you, how many people like you, how many people subscribe to you. Then if a whole bunch of people subscribe to you, then you must be a great person. But that's not always the case, because you got a lot of people like EDP, they got a lot of people to subscribe to him, and he's up here trying to hook up with kids and take their cookie. So I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you kind of got to take it with a grain of salt. Number four, Blanket. At first, Stone and Parker were against doing a Michael Jackson episode, seeing as how the controversial pop star is an overused target for satire. The creators came around to the idea, however, when they decided to make Jackson's youngest son, Blanket, the focus. My name's Blanket. Your name is Blanket. Right, well, Blanket, I'm Howdy Doody, and these are my friends, Timsy, Winky, and Nut. <laughs> Suddenly, the episode had more heart. And what's more touching, wow. Kyle becomes something of a big brother towards Blanket in Michael Jackson's absence. All right, this is going to sting for a second. Ow! I know, I know. Be cool. Thank you, that already feels better. Kyle realizes just how neglected uh... and alone Blanket is, telling Mr. Jefferson that he needs to stop acting like a child and take care of his own children. Let's say it's all made up, and Mr. Jefferson is just a nice guy who's trying to be a child because he never got to have a child. Boy, hold on. Call of Duty zombie face ass, boy. Boy, the, the face when you get a queef in your face. <laughs> boy, when you go down and you get a fart in your face. <laughs> well, that's fine, except for that he has children now. And when people have children, they have to grow up. The episode is made even more poignant when you consider that a few plot points were taken out of real life like Blanket's artificially inseminated birth, and how Jackson made his kids wear masks in public. My daddy says it's best for me to hide my face. Number three, Mysterion, the Guardian Angel. The first episode that really touches upon Kenny's relationship with Karen comes at the end of season 15, when the McCormick kids wind up in a cruel foster home. Welcome to your new home. Before we show you around, let's get one thing clear. This is a very strict religious household. Bro, the house is fucked up. That's first thing, boy. Get your saving Private Ryan looking ass the fuck out of here, bro. The house is fucked up. You need to be strict on getting a new floorboards in that bitch. Kenny can only do so much to help a scared, confused sister, but his alter ego Mysterion can do more. Karen McCormick is off limits. Taking on his superhero persona, Kenny visits Karen at night, reassuring her that she's not alone and that everything will be okay. You are not alone. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I will always be here. Though Mysterion Damn, is generally the conduit for Kenny's darker side, in this moment, Mysterion reveals a more loving and gentle brother who will do anything to protect his loved ones. Just as Batman is Bruce Wayne's mask, Mysterion allows Kenny to express what he's truly feeling. Number two, beautiful sadness. Although the other kids frequently poke fun at Butters for his innocence and naivety, sometimes his sincerity can rub off on them. Go ahead and go. It's best we don't say anything more. There's nothing left to say. It's over. Our relationship isn't over. Aw, oh, Butters. After getting dumped by his so-called girlfriend, Butters is left whimpering in the rain. Stan and his fellow goth kids thus invite Butters to join them, but he turns them down, saying there's still more to life than just pain. Just because Butters is heartbroken doesn't mean that he himself is broken. If anything, the sadness makes him appreciate life more. Well, yeah, and I'm sad. But at the same time, I'm really happy that something can make me feel that sad. It's like... It, it, it makes me feel alive, you know? Moved by this touching mm, point of view, damn. Stan realizes that it's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, and ditches the goth kids. He's right. I can feel it. I don't know who I am anymore. I like liking life a lot more than hating it. Screw you guys. I'm going. Because you gotta live life anyway. Why the fuck are you going around acting like, you know, hating that shit, bro? Like, just live life, bro. Do better. Find somebody that's dead. Kenny's Sacrifice. Though we can never quite see the goat is back. He's still the goat too. I understand what he's saying. Kenny is often the voice of reason and virtue in South Park, and this is best exemplified in their feature film. After helping a heartbroken Satan see the light, Kenny is granted one wish. You showed me that I had to get away from him. Just make any wish you want, and I shall grant it. 
than asking to be resurrected, Kenny wishes for everything on Earth to go back to the way it was. He said that his wish is for everything to go back the way it was before this horrible war. Kenny, you realize that means you'd go back too. Before returning to hell, however, he reveals his face and speaks clearly for the first time. Wow. Then his friends farewell. Goodbye, you guys. He then disappears. Damn! And we next see him flying up to heaven, his sacrifice rewarded. That's what's up! Everyone in the theater choked up. This ending elevated South Park into new territory, proving it's much more than a foul-mouthed cartoon. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. That touched me, bro. Paul, that touched me, bro, because it's just like... Damn, bro. You know, South Park can make you move, make you feel good like that, dog. He straight went to heaven, bro. But, man, that's why he's the GOAT. That's why, matter of fact, I'm gonna do a video just strictly on Kenny being the GOAT, bro. If y'all would like that, hit that thumbs up, bro. Let me know that y'all would want that, man. I love y'all, man. Be safe. Guess what? Peace.